Welcome back to Framing the Force. Before the break, we discussed the unaired parody series Star Wars Detours with guest of the show, Patrick Kotner. To wrap up today, we had to take a minute to discuss The Phantom Menace, which is one of my personal favorite Star Wars films, as well as the Naboo movie, which is one of the more unique Star Wars events that I've personally seen. Patrick, you produced and served as one of the narrators for the live reading, so can you share with the audience what the Naboo movie is and how it came to be? Yeah, so the Naboo movie is an all-star live reading of the script, the the shooting script of The Phantom Menace. Uh, So we literally just took the script, I cast it with a whole bunch of uh, very funny, famous people in LA, and we did a reading of it. And that was pretty much, that pretty much sums it up. Um, it was, it was wild. It's one of the things I'm the most proud of, uh, you know, Tony Hale from Arrested Development and Veeps in it. Bobby Moynihan plays Darth Maul in full, like SNL level makeup. Uh, Eric Bauza, who's, uh, the guy who does all the Looney Tunes voices and a whole bunch of voices, but he did Jar Jar as Daffy Duck. And it was genuinely, it's crazy. It's crazy. It works so well, but like, uh, original SNL cast member Lorraine Newman, like Haley Joel Osment was Anakin. Like it's it's bananas, you know? Um, and it happened because we're friends with the guys from the Star Wars Minute podcast, Pete and Alex, which was a podcast where they went through Star Wars minute by minute. Uh, each episode was a new minute. Um, and that was a podcast that went on for like 10 years or so. Uh, it's still going. But um, And they came to me and said, you know, something we've always wanted to do was a live reading of a Star Wars script. And I said, please tell me no more. I am in. I am so that sounds great. Uh, and they were like, let's try to do it for the anniversary for May, you know, sometime in May. And I said, great. So I went to this theater that I do a lot of stuff at, Dynasty Typewriter here in LA. And I said, hey, can we do this in May? They said, we're really booked up. The only night we have free is May 19th. And I said, beautiful. Because guess what? That's the anniversary. That was uh, perfect. Yeah. It was perfect. It worked out great. So we, yeah, we did it. And it was very fun and went uh, about as well as I think it could have gone. And it's, you know, I think a lot of people, the thing I said to the people doing the reading before we did it was a lot of people like to dunk on this movie and that's not what I want tonight to be. I want tonight to be fun and I want it to be a celebration and I don't want this to be a poo-poo, this movie stinks, you know? Let them know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but like, have fun with it at the same time, but don't read a line and then be like, oh boy, you know, at the end or whatever. Like, I don't want that. Don't do that. Mm. That's not fun. I'm bored of that already, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, You're so they did it and, and everyone, everyone did their own, their own take on things. And that was really cool to like, you know, hear that Daffy Duck take or just like see someone doing a different voice and be like, oh, interesting. That works too. Like you could do that. Or, mm. A lot of lines in that movie that look, we can all agree there are some lines that do not work as well as others in that movie. Uh, it, you know, love the whole, some of the parts are a little wonky sometimes, but whatever, it's fine. But when you hear other people reading them in a different way, you're like, oh, it's a whole new experience, it does work, it just didn't work that way. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. also reading the shooting script, which is what we did, they've cut a lot of stuff out from the final movie that is still in that script, so there's things that like pay off in the movie that are not set up in the movie but they're set up in the script so like anakin flying that the the n1 starfighter at some point he goes oh boy this is nothing like pod racing he says something like that and then five minutes later he goes now this is pod racing and you're like oh that's what that is referring like he's not just saying that nowhere. it was setting up like it came that was a whole line from yeah yeah so there's like a few things in there where I hadn't read the script beforehand. I was like, I want to make this fresh for me too while we're reading it. And things would happen and I'd be like, oh, okay. Like it just like made so much more sense when you heard it that way. Um, so like did any of those moments like surprise you or were you like, why didn't they leave this in? Or like, oh, I'm glad this was cut. Like, I mean, I think it was a lot of like little lines in it. There's a couple scenes that are like a little too jokey that sort of get into like battle droidy in episode two and three, you know, when they get a little yeah. silly that I was like, I get why this is cut and it's probably okay that this was cut. But then there's just some lines like that, you know, like setting up things or like one extra line explaining something, you know, the, I think the midi-chlorians speech from Qui-Gon is a little bit longer that like makes more sense. And, and just like, you don't have to like read seven books and watch two animated series to be like, Oh, I got this now, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, 
So I, I am trying to think of anything specific. The, now this is pod racing thing is what sticks out in my brain. But That's such a there's good definitely example of like added connections that you get from it. Totally. Like yeah. 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 Um, but there's also stuff that's missing. Like we're once this comes out, we will have already done it unless something terrible happens. Uh, but we're doing the great Camino caper, which is our episode two live reading. Um, it's got a lot of the same cast, but a bunch of new people that are genuinely crazy, uh, including someone that, unless they drop out, is reprising their role from episode two with Back <laughs> of the Clones. Um, okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, crazy. Uh, I'm not going to say it in case they have to. Build, right. I don't think they will. Right. I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. Uh, <laughs> I'll put it in the private chat right now so you can react to it. Um, but oh, it's okay. okay. That's going to be a it's lot of fun. fun. Yeah. It's fun oh, and it's cool. weird. Uh, but also like, you know, there's a lot of cool people who I've like never really done stuff with, um, that are just like, oh, this is rad that you're doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so that ideally by now should be up on our George Lucas talk show YouTube, or it will be within the next week. Um, it takes a long time to edit a six camera, a six <laughs> yeah. camera film, but, uh, it'll, it'll be up soon. Um, and hoping it goes well. But the last one was, it was genuinely like one of the most fun things that I've ever, I've ever worked on, you know? It, it seemed like such a genuinely great time. Can you, yeah. do you have any stories that you can share about booking for that and how that kind of like came to be? Like, how did you get these people involved? And yeah, is anyone that you like would have loved to get on there? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we try, look, we, I'm very happy that Eric did it. I think he was one of the best parts of the show doing Daffy as Jar Jar, we tried to get Ahmed and he just wasn't in town that weekend. You know, it was just one of those things where it's like the schedule doesn't line up and that just happens. Yeah. Um, would love to have him do one of them down the line because unless we get a cease and desist, there's seven more of these, you know? So like, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully something else will happen. But uh, he was very disappointed. He said he really wanted to do it if he had been there. Um, yeah. But yeah, I had worked with most of them before a few of them were just cold reach outs. Like I'd never worked with Lorraine Newman before. And I'd never worked with Tawny Newsom, who's on uh, Star Trek Lower Decks. She's the lead on that. And she played Padme in this. Um, so I liked having that Star Trek, Star Wars crossover thing. It, you know, it, it, fun. Went, it went, why I posted it in the Star Trek Reddit and like people loved it. And I was like, okay, I guess we have to get more Star Trek people for these things. Like, <laughs> it's just interesting. Um, yeah. And that was just a cold reach out being like, look, we're doing this thing. I think you would have fun with it. I hope you'll say yes, you know, and that's kind of all it takes a lot of time. You know, you're booking all these things and like so many of them are just cold reach outs. And it's like, I want you to have fun. I'm not doing this because I think you're going to have a bad time. I genuinely think you will have fun with this. And if you trust me on that, a person you do not know, I, I think it will be a good night. And luckily those people did trust me, but you know, reaching out to like Tony Hale, who I'd done stuff with, but not a ton with, um, and just being like, I basically want you to be the lead of this. You know, I, I think you will have a good take on this. You're not a huge Star Wars guy, you know, but you'll uh, you'll be able to bring your own flavor to it. Excuse me, bring your own flavor to it, and like really change up what that character is. And I think that's exciting for people to be like, let me go into this thing that all the people who are watching this know so well uh and see what i can do to mix it up i mean some of the people who i love the most were the guys from the super ego podcast it was matt gorley who's on conan's podcast and mark mcconville and and all these all these guys from this podcast but they played the nemoidians who i mean look even this is just a little reachy but they're right in front of me right now <laughs> I, just, I had the action figures directly in front of me um uh and obviously you have to be careful with some of the accents that are happening in the Phantom Menace right, in right. 2024. Things are not what they were, and things even when they made that movie uh, maybe should not have gone down that not route. Not the greatest. Yeah, the yeah. Movie. So <laughs> I'm not. Uh, yes, I'm not okaying anything. I want to be clear. Uh, but we basically said to them, "You guys get all on the same page about what you're going to do, but you should all do the same thing." Mm -hmm. And they said, "Okay, got it." They went and they chatted. And they did them as like Southern gentlemen, you know, like Southern lawyers, basically, you know, oh, excuse me, sir, you know, like a lot of that stuff. And it's mm -hmm. very funny <laughs> watching it, you know, it's like, it's a totally different take on these characters and like something that you wouldn't expect to work. But just like hearing them being like bumbling Southern fools is like 
very funny, you know? Uh, yeah. So I, you know, it, it, I love casting things and I love um, being creative, being like, who, who would be good for this thing? You know, cause you've seen this movie so many times that these performances are like etched into your brain. It's like hard to get rid of Liam Neeson or Natalie Portman, or even like Karen Stamp or whatever, you know, like Diana Lee Santo from Ahsoka played Palpatine, you know? Mm -hmm. So like thinking like, okay, who's outside of the box that would be interesting here that would do something cool and people would be excited to see them. And I think that is the most fun thing for me. Uh, and Attack of the Clones, this one we're doing, there's a lot like that, where it's like really thinking outside of the box, being like, oh yeah, that person has like a vibe that I think they could tap into and play this part. Um, and I'm excited I'm excited to see how that goes. But uh, I do yeah. have a follow-up, just one, because yeah. I have to know, how. like what was the conversation or what to get eric to do jar jar as yeah Jesse. how does that well, let's see let's look at this let's look at this email i'm gonna read what this email receipts actually <laughs> yeah i'm, I'm uh, curious to see how this went because that that was probably my favorite part my my second favorite part i think has to be wado because wado was also yes. excellent but, yes, but yes, jar jar yes. by far was was uh, it was perfect okay so here's how this happened I'm reading the email right now. I, in my head, said, I want Daffy Duck, okay? But I'm not mm -hmm. going to tell Eric to do Daffy Duck because I don't want to be like dance monkey, you know, like mm -hmm. do the voice, do the voice. <laughs> right. So uh, what I said was, we want people to have fun with it. Don't be beholden to anything that was done in the movies. Make it your own. If you want to do a Jar Jar voice, go for it. If you want to do another one of your myriad of voices, it would also be fun leaving it up to you. And the email I got back says, Daffy Duck as Jar Jar Binks, and I said exactly what I was hoping you'd say. <laughs> so, perfect, that's just perfect, a, a perfect yeah. light up. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and then my my uh, final question for you is: This is a very important scene in the film, very yeah. loved. The pod race. Oh sure. It's Eleven minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just cut. Yeah, it's fully cut. So is is that cut. a you is that a you choice? Is that the script? Well, it, no, it's in the script. It's definitely okay. in the script. <laughs> um, there, we we thought of a couple different things because I know I know Greg Proops a little bit, who's one of the announcers in it, mm -hmm. like in the movie. And I was like, yeah. we could just like have Greg Proops come in and do this for five minutes, you know? <laughs> but this script, it already took us two hours and I think fifty minutes to do this, you know long time that's a long mm. time and to add in seven minutes of us being like so Bulba takes the first turn oh no <laughs> he crashes his powder you know just like doing the whole thing it's like is that exciting i think it's just funnier to be like anakin gets ready for the race and he wins you know no, just I, like that, it was great it was, it was out. executed yeah. perfectly so thank you, thank I, I just you. i yeah. had to pick your brain on that one yeah i think that was a pete uh from star wars minute idea because he's the one who really like put the script together I think mm -hmm. he was like, listen, this is long and this is a very easy way to just like chunk out 20 minutes of this movie, you know, or whatever it is. Uh, and I'm I'm happy that he did it. It was the right move. It was definitely no, it, right it was smart. And then the, the payoff was great too. It was just like, yeah. boom. And it got yeah. a lot of laughs. A, so it was, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And, and that's yeah. the goal. The goal is to get the laughs, you know? Yeah, exactly. You so it, it to it be was, funny. You couldn't, I don't think you could have done that any better, honestly. Thank you. Thank you.